So this is on. This world was inspired by uh, three things I really love, uh, the sky and clouds. I worked for many years as a matte painter and a scenic painter and so I love clouds and vol these are volumetric clouds, they're, of course they're real time so they're, they're pretty crude but they are volumetric. And then the ocean, I love the ocean and, uh, and then uh, rocks, I just love rocks and rock formations and so on. So, on will make his way across the sky. Shanti is the benevolent being and wise steward of the, the, the slope. And you can, if you get close to her, you can interact with her and she will, you can request a vision and she will give you a, a mystical vision. I recorded with uh, my band back in uh, uh, 1989. I created this world, it's called Namulanki, and it's a kind of an ancient aquatic oasis from the distant future, an otherworldly getaway for adventure and relaxation. It came from visions I had given to me by the ancient elders from the distant future. They come from a possible distant future, and they showed me this world and told me that if by creating a connection between their time and our time, it would help to ensure that they would eventually come into being and that we would continue into that future. The ancient elders are a form of self-engineered life that emerges from the integration of humanity with artificial intelligence at some point in the future. I've had these visions, or as folks have said, vivid imagination all my life. The first time I met the ancient elders, was in the form of some agave plants in my backyard when I wasn't quite five years old. I think it was 1964. And they showed me visions of these possible futures. This is about 100 meters above uh, the, the ocean. You can get a nice view of the, of the world and see Key Rock way out there. We'll be going there, as well as Saqqara Rock down there. And... Um, if you're comfortable jumping, it's a really fun uh, jump into the ocean. Okay, you ready? Here we go. We have the jester, who is the uh, the steward of uh, Jester's Garden, and uh, and he provides a, a vision. <laughs> My imagination is very much like virtual reality, and my parents were Disney artists, and so I grew up surrounded with art technology, and I knew about animation and stop motion and special effects even as a small child, and I envisioned technology that would one day enable me to immerse people in my imagination. And that has taken a good deal longer than I expected, but here we are. I had a lengthy career in the visual effects industry as a visual effects supervisor. I got to help pioneer the use of computer graphics for visual effects and got to work on lots of really fun movies. I even won an Oscar at one point for my work on the film What Dreams May Come. And when I'd been working on the VR stuff for a little while, as soon as those the prototypes became available, I started developing for it and in January 2015 I left the visual effects industry to focus on virtual reality and making my worlds full-time. I created Zen Parade back in 2015 and then Blortasia in 2017 
and then Onondala, which was an official selection of the Venice Biennale last year, it took a few years to make. And then this is my new world that's in the Biennale this year. I worked on lots of movies as an artist for many years, even before computer graphics, doing visual effects for The Abyss. And this is the ice cave of Feth Fieta. And you can see the glowing mist in the distance. It's Feth Fieta, who is a benevolent being. She's uh, taken her name from uh, the druidic term Feth Fieta, which means magical mist. And uh, there's an ice bridge here. This whole world is, is three-dimensional. You can navigate to all the different cliffs and different areas. But we'll, we'll go down this ice bridge. I had gotten into computer graphics with the idea of being ready to do virtual reality when it was feasible. And this is uh, the alcove. I call this the alcove of equanimity. It's just a, it's a spot I, I, I really like to visit. I worked on Interview with the Vampire and True Lies, A Beautiful Mind, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Fight Club. Those are all movies that I supervised. I was the overall visual effects supervisor for those films. I did Big Fish with Tim Burton. So I've worked with a lot of really cool directors, Tim Burton, David Fincher, Ron Howard. It's a long list and it's been a few years since I really thought about it. There's uh, many channels of spatial audio in here, so the music sound effects and everything are mixing as we move through it and changing. Um, this is uh, Feth Fieta there. If we go down a little further, we can listen to her song of compassion a little clearer. It was in college that I began to experiment with uh, hallucinogens, and I explored that pretty extensively, and of course combined with my tendency towards visions, my effects were more amplified than some of my friends. I had really profound experiences during that time, which really affected my art. The psychedelics really just amplified the whole thing, and it was very clear that I'd been having psychedelic experiences experiences all my life before ever using any chemical compounds. I'm interested in the experience of awe and to inspire people's imagination and inspire the state of awe. Those are the things that have really fueled my life and provided me with a great deal of joy. And I've spent a lot of years engaged in studying neuroscience and trying to apply principles of neuroscience to my work to enhance those abilities. Awe is an incredible power for healing, both psychologically and even physiologically. It enhances well-being and it causes us to reevaluate our ideas of self and the nature of reality. And that reevaluation is a very positive thing. It can bring about very positive changes to personality and attitude in people. This, uh, this ice bridge is a little narrow, so watch your step when you're crossing it. I love clouds and I grew up in Southern California and spent a lot of time in Catalina Island scuba diving and snorkeling and then subsequently in various places around the world and I just love the undersea world and uh, here's another kind of interesting rock formation again this this whole cave is completely procedural so it, you know the way it came out the ice bridges the way they formed and all that was was something that was emergent I think that first one we came down was one where I had to help it a little bit to make it navigable, but this is all just how it, how it came out from the functions. blessing of compassion. I love the calming nature of the water, just the way it looks staring at the surface of the water and the reflections and refractions in it. And so I'd always wanted to create a virtual world which had these features. I also love rocks and, the, and geology and the way their forms and just their shapes and their textures. So I wanted to try to create some of that complexity in a virtual world.
And this uh, this uh, tunnel leads uh, to the chasm of key. So we'll go on through that. This is another force field. This doesn't, uh, you know, hold out water. This isn't a barrier of water. Uh, but this force field separates the ice uh, climate from. Uh, we're going to be entering a volcanic climate, which is very hot. So uh, we just jump right, right through it, run through it, or jump through it. And now we're in this uh, much, uh, much different uh, environment here. is uh, this is Ki, the benevolent being named after uh, the, go the Sumerian goddess Ki, who is the goddess of the earth. also immensely frustrating because the technology is really just barely up to the task and I'm really interested in complexity and realism even though much of my work is completely abstract I really like the realism of complex forms and light and shadow I'm so excited because it's continuing to evolve and improve with time each new generation of graphics cards provides more capabilities and the software for the worlds becomes more and more powerful. And then the other element of it that's so exciting about VR chat is that now we see this emergence of the idea of the metaverse, which has been in my mind all my life. And we see that gaining a bit more attention and popularity. I keep track of all the latest developments in hardware and software. I'm eagerly awaiting each new incremental improvement. This space is the only space in which I, I baked the lighting in order to get the, the light from the from the blue ocean above and the light coming from Key herself. Makes for some nice nice uh, ambient lighting. When I was doing visual effects for movies as the overall supervisor, I had vast armies of really talented artists and developers as my hands. I could just wield this incredible force. And you see a lot of the movies that are made and even the movies I worked on just had thousand man years of work on them. A single individual, it's pretty hard to be able to do that level of work. The film industry is very collaborative and the visual effects supervisor, it's not his story, it's the director's story or the writer's story or the studio story. I'm very interested in that notion of individual self-expression, but I really did enjoy having that incredible power of collaborating with artists and being able to say, no, I want it like this, and they go away and sometimes they bring you stuff that's better than you had hoped or imagined. It's also a testament to the direction that the technology is 
is taking and now with AI, the ability to generate these vast worlds with incredible complexity as an individual becomes more feasible. When lots of people are involved, often there's lots of money involved and that inevitably leads to creative compromise in the pursuit of maximizing commercial potential. But I'm certainly open to it. I, boy, if I could wield the power I had when I was supervising movies to build VR worlds, that would be a dream come true. Mamu is uh, one of the original ancient elders, or one of the original uh, self-engineered beings. And uh, she is uh, named after the, the Sumerian goddess of the primordial oceans. She's the creator of the, supposedly the creator of the gods, and, and she's their, their creation, uh, the deity.